How would you best describe Marilyn and your relationship to her? Um, Marilyn was, uh, let me tell you, let me tell you a story about our growing up and what it was like. Um, uh, I've told this story to lots and lots of the patients that I see on consultation, so maybe I can't use it after I've spoken it to you. But the, the, sto the story is that my father came from Russia, my father and mother, in a little tiny village there, and it's called the Shtetl, uh, which is a Jewish village, and they came over to, to this country. My father opened up a little grocery and liquor store on First Street, first in S Street in Washington. And it was in the middle of a very rugged neighborhood, uh, lots of crime. Uh, it was Washington, it was a black part of Washington, D.C. Washington was segregated then, where the blacks lived and where the whites lived. So it was right in the middle of a black section of town. The only white people there were often the shopkeepers uh, they kept. So I, I, he bought it, got an apartment right over the store so my mother could come down to help him when it was busy. And I grew up there till I was about 14. It was it was a very rough youth for me because uh, the only friends I had were black friends. My parents wouldn't let me bring them into the house or go to their house. So I, I spent a lot of time in the library reading at that point. And um, it, it was it was really qu quite a quite a rugged growing up. Her father, by sheer chance opened up a girl, came from Russia, another village, they didn't know each other, and and her his father, her father's store was on 2nd Street in S, one block away. Uh, Marilyn never went to that store because her father bought a house in a nicer part of town where he thought it would be good for that family to grow up. He had three daughters. So I passed her father's store without, of course, knowing him, maybe a thousand times on my way to school every day. So Marilyn grew up in this very nice neighborhood, lots of... Uh, lots of dancing lessons and singing lessons and elocution lessons and French lessons. She had a wonderful, safe childhood. And and as I knew her in the rest of her life, Marilyn didn't even know what anxiety was. Uh, whereas I had anxiety many times and saw lots of therapists. I'm seeing a therapist now to help me with my grief, but Marilyn never needed anything. She had such uh, extraordinary social skills and knew how to be with other people. Uh, almost, she never had an enemy, uh, whereas I, I was very different. Uh, so I tell that story often just to remind people if they have a difficult early childhood, there's lots of evidence that there, there will be anxiety and discomfort later on. And don't, don't uh, deprive yourself of getting to, into therapy sometimes many times as you get older. So that, that's the difference between Marilyn, very socially skilled. Uh, always the president of her class and valedictorian, and uh, everyone loved Marilyn, me most of all. That's, that's amazing. How did you know that Marilyn was the person that you wanted to be with, that you wanted to marry? Well, I, I tell the story, oh, I'm not sure if it's in this book or the memoir, but uh, when I first met Marilyn, I was were going with some disreputable friends. I was going to bowling alley and uh, often gambling on the games there. And one of them said, you know, there's a, after we finish, there's a, there's a party at Marilyn Koenig's house down the street. So it was a few blocks away. I walked with him. I, I never went to parties. I was so socially frightened of people. Uh, but he said, Let, let's go in. And then, but there were so many kids outside the house who couldn't get in. The stairs were all blocked. And my friend said, well, let's crawl in through the window. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. And I saw Marilyn speaking to people. I didn't know who she was, but I went up to her. But I was very attracted to her. And uh, she was very tiny. She's hardly five foot tall and weighed about 95 pounds. Always like that, even into old age. But I went up to her and didn't know what to say. So I just said, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm Irv Yellum. I just crawled in through your <laughs> through your window but she was very she was very nice to me and we talked for a while there and and uh i i called her after that for a date my first date in in my life so we 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 went out and uh, she told me that she had uh, skipped school that day 
uh, that was strange. And I, so the reason was that she had stayed up all night reading the rest of the book, Gone with the Wind, which is quite a long book. And so she couldn't, she was too tired to go to sleep that day. So that, that won, won me over because I, I was the man of books. I spent all my time in the library growing up. So that uh, we had in common and always, always had that in common. So that's, that's when we met that, that, that date. And then that first, the first date afterwards, when I heard that she had skipped school and uh, I was totally uh, devoted to her after that. And if you look back through, say, the entirety of your marriage, how would you sort of best overall, you know, give a sort of summary of the the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows? Like, like when you look back, how would you sort of best describe the relationship? Well, the um, the the relationship was was always there was always an intellectual aspect to it she was always she got a phd in french and comparative literature so she always taught at a college and i always taught too once i finished my training so we had this academic background background together so uh it was it was something that was always in inviolate to her there was a time i i got a, a rockefeller foundation grant for for writers uh and they we went to a place in bellagio italy and they we had a nice apartment they gave there were about 15 writers who had gotten the award for it's a was a month or two i've forgotten whether how long it was um but they, they gave the writers uh, a, a little office where they could write also um and then we had our own apartment uh but marilyn started talking to me at that point about some work she was doing with a uh, French women who had observed the French Revolution and what they had written about it. And she talked about that. And I said to her, you know, that sounds like an interesting, you know, story. Maybe there's a book in here for you. And she she began thinking, she had not written a book at that point. She began thinking about that. And I said, let's let's ask the people at Rockefeller whether you could get an office too. And they I went to the office and uh, they said, no, 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 we, offices aren't for for spouses are just for the people who've gotten the awards but the head of the institute had me that coming by just then and he said wait a minute there is an open office and it was a tree house in the woods so just about 10 minute walk because it was right by the end of a wood in, in bellagio and so when she climbed up these this little ladder and it was a beautiful office so she began to write her book then that was her first book uh french observers of the french revolution and um after that uh she sort of matched me book for book uh, i think i'd say she probably wrote every book every time i was writing a book she was writing a book after that and a whole marriage was around that and she was always my first and best reader and i always always her first reader as well so that was so much of our of our marriage together uh it, it was and we had we had four children and, um, and somehow we stayed together and loved each other always i would love to know you know i mean your 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 marriage it, it lasted a, a very long time it was clearly one of depth How, what why do you think your marriage lasted so long what, what was the secrets to sort of a good relationship what what, what how did that last so long Oh, it's a hard question. Well, we did. We sh we shared this. We shared our academic interests. Uh, we shared our friends. We were always both teaching at some university or others. The I think the only time there was a bit of a strain was when when Marilyn was was teaching. She was a professor at a nearby university. We had someone at Stanford, you know, sort of invited her to come over and and be a head of a of a woman woman center that they were there. So she had a lot of feminist interests too. And so when she did that, she began so much, so completely lost in this whole movement. Uh, I began to say to her, you know, uh, uh, you're, you're leaving me out. And that was the only strain that our, that our time, that in our time, that our time came. But that was perhaps the only crisis that we had. And after that, 
uh, she she was she had extraordinary social skills. Had was loved by everyone. And it was very close. It's very hard for me to talk about this without being near tears. I'm sorry uh, about that because somehow, even though it's been well over a year, I still am in in deep grief, as I knew I would be. Uh, I've worked a, a great deal in my professional work with bereaved people, and I, I know the time scales and it's always been a year or two and I, I had a feeling from the very beginning with the, the depth and the length of our relationship that it was not going to be easy for me and so it hasn't.